Welcome back to Hot Take Sports, episode 72, and we are once again joined by UFC welterweight and Hot Take Sports regular Brian Bam Bam Barbarina. Brian, welcome back to the show. Well, thanks again for having me, fellas. Always great to be on here talking with you guys. So, Brian, I got to ask first, what's the Tennessee shirt for? Oh, honestly, I don't know. I got it for, uh, I got it as a gift, I think, oh, quite a while ago. I just, you know, I put it to use, wear it around the farm. That'll work. Well, the last time we talked, you guys were in the middle of your move from Tennessee. Are you guys all moved into North Carolina now? All moved in? Uh, I mean, it doesn't <laughs> feel like it. Uh, getting there, though, you know, slow and steady. All righty. Well, we'll kind of dive into your fight with RDA, and we'll kind of move from there. So, overall, what did fight week for UFC Orlando look like for you? What kinds of things were you doing during the day, and what did weigh-ins look like? Things like that. Uh, it was pretty chill. I mean, I had a little – obviously, I had more meat because I was the co-main event for the that event. Um, but nothing really out of the ordinary. You know, the days are pretty – fight week's pretty much all the same for me, um, no matter where it's at. Uh, I, you know, to really focus on that. So I mainly just rest all week, lay down and watch Food Network and hang out with my team, hang out with my wife and, um, you know, enjoy the cooking shows and all the good food they, they make. And then we end up having like one little practice uh, in the afternoons. Try to be close to around the times that I'm going to fight, but if they're really late, then I just do it, you know, around like nine o'clock or something and and get it done. Um, but besides that, weigh-ins, I mean, weight cut was good, went all right. Um, weigh-ins was all right. You know, it was cool. It was a lot of people there. Um, I guess Florida is one of the highest places for uh, Colombians uh, where, they, where they live. So that was pretty cool to have uh, the Colombian support in the crowd. You know, I saw a lot of Colombian flags uh waving people waving them in the in the crowd and everything too so that was pretty cool uh to have that you know my hispanic background and have the people supporting me there um so it was good I, everything was good up to the fight <laughs> i feel like watching food network and uh trying to stay around the way you need to be that's kind of counterproductive <laughs> yeah you know a lot of people uh seem to think that uh for me it's like my relief to not eating a bunch of food i guess uh and just watching it i like to watch people eat uh, a lot of the time i have my i order food for my corners from like local places that have really good food and then i watch them eat it um my corner this time had a uh, was fighting actually the week after me so he couldn't eat it all so that, that was a little bit of a bummer that's funny yeah we did see the thing on twitter you were looking for a pizza place to go to go to post fight how was that how did it end up uh, I don't think we ended up going to the original place that I posted, um, but we went to another place. I ended up getting deep dish, and uh, it was it was phenomenal. So, uh, we were there. Shout out to him. I, I asked you what type of pizza crust your preference was because you said you got deep dish. What type of crust? Um, you know, normally like uh, a stuffed crust is fine. Anyway, I like a, just like a good airy crust, um, kind of like <laughs> – Neapolitan style is uh, is my favorite. You know, I can really eat like a ton of that crust and everything. I so, are you at home right now? I gotta ask. Just yeah, yeah. Okay. Also so the, the topic of pizza, that country, the country service. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely yeah. get that. We all get that here. A lot yeah. of OT and lag. Yes. Yes. Um, so anyway, with pizza, does pineapple belong on pizza? You know, there's a lot of arguments for this. I'm for it. I'm for, for it. it. Yeah. Okay. There we I'm go. For, yeah. People, I, I mean, people get after me about it, but I like pineapple on pizza. It's good. It's mandatory. Anytime pizza comes up, you have to ask. I mean, it's just. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, never, I've never personally tried it, but it's always just seemed wrong in my mind. <laughs> You've never tried it? No. <sighs> okay. I just don't like pineapple. That's my problem. I don't like pineapple in general. So it's just really oh. like what else is on there? If it's like pineapple and ham, it's like. Eh. Wait, what? What else do you put on it? Yeah, it's just the Hawaiian. You know? I, it just really depends on on 
I've seen people put you're getting like pineapple, black olives, and anchovies or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> what is on your pizza, Brady? I've, I've seen people hey. order pineapple, and mushrooms, and, and sausage before. Wake up! Do you know how pineapple, sausage. Sausage. <laughs> that's so pineapple? No, that's supposed to be my pizza being ready. Pineapple, <laughs> in, the, in the oven? No, I turned it off. <laughs> we got pizza on 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 the menu tonight, or what? It was supposed to be, but yeah. uh, I got back too late from work, so. Mountain Dew oh. and granola bars, it is. <laughs> Did you put it back in the freezer? No, I just left it in the oven. I'll cook it later. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> so, That's the college of... life, I guess. Yeah. Take a preview to the next day. So to kind of circle back, what was it like sharing the cage with RDA and what did you take away from this experience? Uh, I mean, it was really cool. You know, uh, another legend in there. Um, obviously I didn't have the showing that I was hoping for. Um, uh, and honestly, I have, I have nothing bad to say about him as far as the, you know, he was the very nice, he was very humble. Uh, even after the fight, he was very nice. Um, was I frustrated, irritated a little bit? Yeah, a little bit just because, you know, the, the, the whole leading up to the fight, he was saying, you know, he wanted to have a fun fight kind of thing. Um, but I don't hold it against him. Like he did what he's going to do. I'm more irritated. I'm irritated more with myself and my performance, not being able to give more and, you know, uh, on my defensive end and wrestling, grappling wise. Um, so, you know, that, that's what I'm getting out of it. That's what I got out of it. You know, I really need to put all my focus into that side of the game. Um, you know, I think I got my mind set going into the fight was thinking it was going to be one thing and, um, you know, not really putting in the focus into the other side. Like I thought he would try to shoot for takedowns, but I just thought it'd be more of a, uh, you know, he'd be more willing to, to throw hands and stuff like an exchange. But uh, I mean, focus into that um whether i get fights that are stand-up fights or not whatever um you know i think people are going to think what they're going to think now after that performance and um you know let them because i'll come show them yeah it's all about the bounce back so uh what was your uh favorite fight from that night um well, I didn't really see the main event. I heard it was pretty good back and forth. I get or pretty good, um, exciting at least. I didn't get to see that because we were they kind of like shuttle you out right away um, from the arena to back to the hotel and stuff. It was like a good forty five minutes an hour drive back to the hotel. Wow. Yeah, yeah, we were kind of way out, but uh, so I don't see that. Um, Trying to think, man. I don't even really, really remember. Uh, my buddy Scott Holtzman fought on the fight. I fought on the card. He fought Clay Guida. Um, you know, it didn't go his way either that night. But uh, that was his final fight of his career. He's moving on to to different things, and it was just uh, cool to actually just share that night with him. So I think that was the coolest thing. That's awesome. Yeah, it's probably hard to focus on other fights when you're kind of getting in the zone. So I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I just, you know, warming up. You try to watch the screen a little bit, but then you try to, like, not get too cold after you're warming up and then kind of get going. Then you get your hands wrapped and everything. So it's kind of, you know, sometimes it's it's tough to, to watch it. Obviously, your fight was, like, uh, like for us as a group, like, our fight of the night to, like, watch. I think the most intense fight of the night was the main card because there was about 15 of us all over at Clayton's house. We were kind of, like, picking fights, and whoever had the worst, like, record of, of uh, uh, fights fig had to go in the pond and it was like 30 degrees outside yes 30 yeah. degrees oh. outside <laughs> and it came down to isaac and about six other people all at, all around like six and seven coming in last night <laughs> everybody in the room picked against isaac isaac was the only one to pick wonder boy thompson so oh. so isaac lucked out and six people had to go into the pond 30 degrees instead of isaac Oh my gosh. That was cold and brutal. That still that happened. Might, you, were, you were one of the six? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I made the mistake of picking with Clayton all night. And so we kept losing. <laughs> That's on you, man. Yeah. 
Yeah, obviously. As soon as you get that one up, you just got to pick the opposite. Yeah, of last place. something like that. <laughs> well, I was always in last place. Brady cheated. He doesn't count. I, I got really lucky because I had a family Thanksgiving, so I had to, to blindly pick the first nine fights, basically at a coin flip. I ended up going five and four. Yeah. Not too bad. Exactly. Hey, that's better than a pawn. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't there a little bit of ice? Yeah. Oh yeah, we right stepped in we stepped in the it's we stepped through ice the first two steps. Oh my god. It was cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, hey, shout out to Mama Spleena for not letting us jump off the deck. That was probably <laughs> that was a idea. Well, I mean, hey man, I I man, that's brave of you guys to even just, you know, <laughs> stick with your word and go in. Especially after filling the ice. <laughs> We couldn't back out. There was there was no turning back at yeah, that point. It's too late at that point. I was nice and warm. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you you and I you Mute and him. I were all warm. We were just having a great time watching watch Winter POV. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> so Brian, right now, what does a typical day kind of look like for you? You know, you're in between fights. You don't really have anything booked yet. So what kind of what does a day in the life of Brian Barberino look like right now? Uh, you know, I'm staying active. Uh a lot of working on the farm, a lot of uh, doing a lot of fixing a lot of fence, doing making, you know, putting up a lot of fence, moving animals, um really taking care of the animals, being with my family, enjoying the time with them. Um you know, and just kind of trying to get settled in, get things done around the house. And then, uh, you know, I make it into training, go to started going to training and, you know, getting in there once, you know, we're a little more settled in. So, you know, can I, just a lot of farm work, a lot of family time, which is, is great. Um, but I'm also staying active and staying ready. You know, I've been calling people out. I had a couple of people call me out. Um, I've accepted, I've said yes to everybody. Some people said yes to me that I called out. Um, you know, so people want to fight me you know we i guess set matchups or whatever through social media kind of thing but um ultimately it comes down to the ufc really making the fight and sending the contracts and making it happen so um i'm hoping that a fight comes through i really wanted to, sh to step in for the shabcat fight on, sh on short notice um but that didn't work out and he's rebooked again against neil so that's you know good for them that they were able to you know reschedule but yeah, so I'm just, you know, staying ready, staying open, and, um, yeah. We, we saw that uh, you had some tweets about Nico Price, and you guys are kind of, like, thinking about trying to get a fight set up. So, like, I guess maybe more, what are the odds that the UFC will get those contracts out? And if they do, what will the timeline on that be? <clears throat> uh... The odds, I don't know. It kind of depends, I guess. You know, you never know, really. Sometimes you don't know what they're thinking or, or, or what they want to do, what they have their their eye, their mindset on. Um, so it just kind of depends. And hopefully, you know, right now, you know, there's like three guys who said yes, and we, you know, all, all said yes to, to doing it. So uh, it looks like everybody's timeline is kind of like March. So hopefully, hopefully, you know, I get a contract to fight in March. That would be awesome. Doing that instead of golfing for your birthday. That can be Clayton's thing. We just do it together. Watch I've done the same again. Yeah. We'll be watching one way or the other. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll be, exactly. Yeah. yeah, we'll be tuning in regardless. So. so, Brian, say that you are, like, in the UFC matchmaking room. You can pick anybody that you want to fight. Right now, who would you pick? Boom, the champ. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Good pick. I Good pick. I get to choose. Why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. The champ. You know, five for the bell. Obviously, you know that doesn't really make you know make sense. But uh, you know, if I if I had if I got to choose, why not? Heck yeah, that's what we like to hear. Exactly. What do you think of their trilogy fight then, Edwards versus Usman? Uh, I think it's going to be very interesting. I think it's going to you know, Usman kind of you know controlled most of that fight up until that point. Um, you know, Edwards was working on set setups and things like that, but wasn't able to really capitalize on a lot of things until he was, you know. So uh, I think the fight's going to go a little differently. I mean, I think Edwards did some big things with, uh, you know, he was able to take down Usman, um, you know, get him down. So there were some some really big moments, especially the KO moment, obviously. Um, I think 
I think Usman's going to come in more calculated, even more calculated, and you know, obviously, you know, I don't know, prepared. They'll both be prepared. So I think it's going to be an interesting fight. I don't think. Uh, I don't know. I think it'll probably be you know a decision on one end, on one side. I, I couldn't really say who. I think I personally think Usman's going to get retain the belt, get the belt back, not retain it, but get it back. Um, and that's just what I think. So. Cool. So, uh, what are your thoughts on the exit of Francis and Ganu? Uh, you know, hopefully, you know that was the best the best move for him. You know, obviously, um, it must have been you know for him to leave, and you know he wasn't able to get everything he wanted um in the contract and everything. So, you know, hopefully, you know I think he's already done big things. You know, uh, from what I know, it, from what I've seen and stuff of him, he comes from a rough background. So he's already achieved so much more than I think, you know, anybody from his background um, normally does. So I think it's, it's huge for him and uh, of all he's accomplished. And I think he's, you know, probably made a lot of money already too. Um, it sucks to see, you know, the champ, you know, go and not go after like defending his belt or anything like that. So, um, but I think a, a boxing fight with Tyson Fury would be cool to see. Um, you know, some, there's some interesting fights out there, but I think that's probably the biggest one. And, you know, it'd be cool to see if that happens. There's definitely options open for him. I still remember the first time I watched him fight and I was just like, this mountain of a man is going to destroy anyone in his path. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely, uh, a guy you don't want to walk down an alley and see at the other side. and, and <laughs> no. Even in the daylight, you'd be like, well, you know what? I'm just going to not go home today. <laughs> <laughs> so there's another heavyweight out there that made a big announcement this week. John Jones is making his return. What do you think his career will look like at heavyweight fighting Cyril Ghosn? Uh, I think I think he'll be successful, you know, just as successful at heavyweight as he was at uh, you know, light heavyweight. He's a very big guy. Big, you know. I think he's gotten his frame a lot bigger. Um, you know, really built into his body. You know, he's very long. Oh, I don't see him having. Did you get any of that? <laughs> we did not. The last thing we heard was he's very long. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. He's very, he's just as, you know, the probably the longest reach in the UFC, I think, still. Uh, so he's, he's very long and, um, you know, he's built into his frame. He has great wrestling ability, his striking. He's able to mix it up very well. So, I mean, he's taken down Olympic wrestlers, you know, DC and stuff like that. So, and he's, he's, you know, striking with some of the best of them in the heavyweight division. So, uh, or light heavyweight division. I don't think he'll have, um, you know, I think he'll have a lot of success at heavyweight as well. So the division he left behind light heavyweight has a title fight this weekend between Teixeira and Hill. Who do you have in that matchup? Uh, I don't know who the underdog is, but, uh, I'm going to go with Hill. I think, I mean, Deshera is well-rounded and he has some crisp, crisp striking as well, but he'll have some, like, put-you-to-sleep power. And, um, you know, he's very – he's long and he's a, he's good in his hands and everything like that. I'm not really too familiar with this ground game, but um, I just think he's going to pull it off. I think he's going to touch Glover and he's going to put him to sleep. And then in the co-main is the first – quadrilogy if you want to call it that in the UFC history with Figgy and Moreno meeting for a fourth time to settle the score who do you have in that one uh, I got Moreno I'm just uh you know I'm a big fan of his I like the dude he's very cool uh, he's a very gracious humble champ when he was the champ just as a person and everything too so uh, I like his personality I like his he always brings it and um so I'm gonna go with him All right, Brian, I'm going to kind of circle back to the actual fighting atmosphere. I know, so this is your third time on, obviously. We're glad you're coming back. We've definitely talked about uh, pre-fights and kind of the build-up to that, and we've talked about, 
you know, what actually you go through in the ring, what you're thinking about, stuff like that. But I feel like we haven't talked about like what's post fight too much. So you said normally they, I mean, they ship you out of the arena like right away. So what else goes along with that? Is there like, is there a debriefing? Is there, you know, what's treatment like, stuff like that? Yeah. So, you know, we're always treated really good. It's, it's changed a lot since like COVID, you know, before COVID you could, you'd hang out in the back. There was a green room for, with food and stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of people would go into the arena and sit at a seat. They'd give you like a seat to be able to sit at, to watch the rest of the fights, um, all that. And it's a little, you know, so now it's different. Now they kind of shuttle you out right away, continuing on with the, kind of the COVID, you know, theme um, after fights. If you win, you know, obviously you stay, you do media, you take pictures and that kind of stuff. But yeah, if you, if you lose, you know, you go right, right to the back. Both people go right to the back. They go right into a, a medical room, get checked out, talk to them. They talk to you, see if anything's bothering you, if you need to go to the hospital, um, anything that needs checked out. Um, you know, you get, you sign some papers uh, on the flight and then, um, and then that's it. Like insurance stuff and, and things like that. You sign it and then, yeah, they got, they had already have your stuff gathered um before you even walk out or anything like that you know they load it up in a van have it ready for you so then yeah now you get in go get in the shuttle and they take you back to the hotel you get to the hotel and basically you're free to do whatever you want you know um for me it's it's simple it's always the same thing i'm not a, a partying guy or you know anything like that for me it's after the fights i'm going i'm going to my room i'm being with my wife i'm being with my kids uh, my team and uh, we we go there and have pizza. You know, if it's within range, I'm driving home back to the farm that night. Uh, I did that in Columbus. You know, after the fight, they shut us back. We need to wait. But most of the time, it's just going back to the hotel. You don't get all debriefed with the UFC. Everybody's really cool and nice, and uh, you know they shuttle you back. Get my pizza is usually there waiting for me, and. Uh, you know, just hang out with the team, kind of like, you know, come down from all the adrenaline and everything like that. Big farm boys not out hitting the clubs? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never, I've never been much of a, a club or bar guy. Uh, so for me, it's just, uh, you know, I feel like the times I have been to, to, to bars and stuff like that, either people try to fight me or um <laughs> no way yeah. no way somebody's out there trying to fight a ufc fighter <laughs> yeah know? so like people try to fight me or like i kind of get bombarded <laughs> with a bunch of questions and like what i could have done better or or whatever so uh for me i just like to you know be with my team be with my family and uh you know just eat pizza and kind of calm down and relax and just you know settle down how good does that first bite of pizza taste? Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> it's, <nothing> like it. <laughs> it's so good because, you know, like I, I'll do some cheat meals through camp. You know, if, you know, usually my diet's good and everything, I have at least one cheat meal a week. Um, but it's never pizza. Pizza always has to wait. Like as soon as I have a fight, like get a contract, boom, pizza's gone. Like I don't get any more pizza until after the fight. So, um, when I get it, whoo, man, it's hit it hits the spot. And I'm making pizza on a random Thursday night after working at Walmart. My goodness, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> get it. <laughs> it's like every other week. Hey, Walmart pizza. Is it a Walmart pizza? Because Walmart pizza is not bad. It's a Jack's pizza. I don't know. It's cheap. Oh, okay. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like the the ones like up at the the deli though. Those are good. Yeah. Those are good. I don't know how I'm able to eat. Like, at least for us, since we have to pick them and put them in totes, we have to, like, balance them on top of totes just to put them up, wait for people to pick them up. That's worth it. I'm so good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. The best pizza I've had, we got, like, a uni pizza oven that cooks the pizzas at, like, 800 degrees in 45 seconds. And, cool. yeah, so. It's McDonald's little pizza right there. Dude, it was amazing. It was probably the best pizza I've ever had. That's Ooh, crazy. You say uni? Yeah, I think it was Uni. Yeah, just a little. I have tiny, one of those. Yeah, it's just a little tiny, like little personal one, and it's amazing. It's really. Yeah, cool. I haven't. I haven't even been able to use it yet. But oh, it's it's definitely worth it, guaranteed. Oh, the next awesome. time you come on, you'll have to tell us how it is. 
Yeah, I'd be making pizzas, slinging pizzas on the side. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> before the contract, though. Oh, okay. Before the contract. <laughs> there it is. Imagine that. <laughs> Bam Bam's Pizzeria. We know. Well, we know what you're doing along with farming. You know, once the career's over. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> Have the pizzeria right, right on the farm. Right. Yeah, there you go. I say, so you can turn your dairy cow and start making some cheese. There you go. That, yeah. We'll Got be there. <laughs> yeah, we'll visit for sure. <laughs> we'll be there. Is Colombian style pizza a thing? Anybody know? No. Might be. I don't know. There's got to be something. I don't know. That's what Google's for. They got to have some kind. Yeah. I have to. Since we're on the topic of food, what does like a day of eating look like for you during camp? Like, how many calories are you on? Make me hungry. <laughs> uh, it just depends really like my wife runs all, all my nutrition now um before i was just kind of like you know eyeballing it so, <laughs> yeah. uh, so, me too I, I, eyeballing it and uh and you know really would just gauge it off how i was feeling through after training sessions and stuff like that and then you know, either add more after the session if I felt kind of sluggish. And then the next day I would kind of change it and eyeball about how much I put in the bowl and put more in. So now that's a little more precise. I mean, not a little more. It's a, it's precise now. Like my wife handles my, all my meal prepping and everything. She does all my meals, cooks it all, weighs it all, <clears throat> you know, knows exactly how much I'm taking in of everything. So um, it's definitely made things easier. And uh, I love her cooking anyway, so that helps a lot, um, you know. And usually it's like, like for me, variety is, is nice, you know. Normally when I was doing it before, it was like a lot of the same stuff every day. So um, variety is nice, mixing it up. So it, I can't, I don't really know. I'd have to ask her what uh, exactly how much I was taking and everything. I just eat it. <laughs> Fair. That's Sweet the best go. part though, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean... <laughs> It's good, you know, and it's fueling me. I'm feeling great through practices, so that's the most important thing. <clears throat> so kind of maybe circle back to farm a little bit. I know the last time we talked, you said that you kind of like cut down your livestock numbers to get ready for the move. Are those back up? Or are they still at the low number? Like what does that kind of look like right now? Uh, you know, we're we're working on it. Uh, so I, did I have the pigs? Do we have the pigs before? I don't remember. I don't exactly. think so. No. Okay. Well, we got, we got some no. pigs. Um, you know, it's going to take them like, they're basically our breeding stock, not just for, for uh butcher right now. So breeding stock, it's going to take about two years for them to get of age to start breeding and everything like that. So we got our breeding stock building up. So I still got <clears throat> some time for them to get old enough to really produce and then, you know, produce our own piglets and everything to raise for butcher. Um, our chickens, we finally got some more chickens because we had sold all of ours at the time. Uh, really regret doing that, but especially with the egg prices right now. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ours aren't laying yet, so that's disappointing. But <laughs> yeah. uh, we got we got chickens. We got some chickens. We were already looking at getting more. Um, and... You know, we're going to be getting some cattle and we're looking at sheep too. So hopefully we'll have those soon. Don't get sheep. What kind of pigs do you have? <laughs> oh, <laughs> why? Why don't get sheep or why? What kind of yeah. pigs do you have? No, why, why don't, don't get sheep? Because they're so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we were taking, like? I was actually taking a couple of sheep to butcher two, two weekends ago, like maybe. That. Oh, man. And it was my dad, brother, and I trying to wrangle five into our little holding pen area so we could actually halt them up, get them on the truck. And it took like 45 minutes just to get them to go in the area. And it's where they normally eat, too, is where our holding area is. So we're like, just just go to the food. And they're like, no, something's up. We're not we're not doing this. So. <laughs> and it was muddy. It had just rained all day. And now it was, it was painful. Nice. But I feel like that could be like any animal situation. Yeah, but sheep are just a different kind of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they really are. Hey, but they're fun to ride, though. The kids will love it. Button busting. Fun to awesome. ride? Oh, yeah. I used to do it at the state fair. I have a belt buckle for mutton busting. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> How, I was like the cutoff age for that, though. 
Oh, I don't. I think the oldest division was like twelve, but it was literally it was like riding a bull. They would put you in the cage. You but we had like a helmet of vest because you know it's like That's eight awesome. or nine. And yeah, you go down. You just grip the wall as tight as you can. Yeah, I got invited to nationals for that in San Diego, but hey, man, go? I'm not gonna pay for it. They just said, "Hey, you can go." Yo, yeah, yeah, mutton busted. That could have been it. Yeah, that's awesome. Could have been riding bulls. No, we can interview you as professional mutton buster. Oh my god. Yeah, we'll get right to that. Well, that's awesome. I don't know. That alone makes me want to cheat even more. All right. Well, have fun with that. So, what kind of pigs do you have? Uh, we have Cooney Coonies. So they're Ooh. actually, they're like a smaller, almost, you know, a lot of people have them pet pigs. Like they sell them as pet pigs. They sell them as just like a small homestead pig. You're not going to get like, you know, a huge amount of, of pork from them or anything like that. Uh, they have, you know, a lot of lard on them too. So it's like able to use for multi-purposes for homesteads. But um, people do sell them as pets and stuff like that too. So we i honestly am not like big on pigs as far as like these huge pigs i've seen some big old pigs and i'm like honestly i'll, I'll be honest i'm a little like terrified like that thing's gonna just yeah. bite my kneecap off or grab a finger or something you know like they're huge oh but it feels so funny when they chew on your boots that's the best part oh <sighs> Oh, yeah, I used to sit out there, scrape pens all morning. They'll come up and they'll chew on your boot. What kind of pigs? You, you wouldn't have. understand. Oh, you, you, you live in the middle of town. Yeah, it was fun. But we have so Durox. Kind of, so. Durox, okay. Yep, that okay. was always our. And then we had a few Hampshires too. And when those crossbreeded, they would be red with a white belt over the front legs and over the back. Those are the prettiest pigs I've ever seen. Those were awesome. Dang. So, did you run them? All right, all right, so the Cooney Coonies, too, are also like a pasture pig. So their snouts aren't really made for a lot of, like, rooting up the ground or anything like that. So they don't root a ton. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, when, you know, the ground gets wet from rain and stuff like that, they'll root a little bit, but it's not enough to, like, destroy a pasture or anything like that. Like, we know a lot of the bigger pigs can root really bad and, like, totally destroy pasture. Um, but these pigs... They like grass. They like to be on pasture. They don't root a whole ton, so that's pretty nice. Um, and they're like small, or so it's like easier to handle. <laughs> yeah, we always we always had to ring our sows, put the rings in their noses so they wouldn't dig up too much. But we had one lot where they would pretty much stay when they were yeah. older and not breeding and stuff, and they could root wherever they want. They had a mud little pond that they could you know cool off in and whatnot. So yeah, yeah. They're definitely cool. Do you need tickets for sporting events, comedy shows, and any other events that you're going to? Because we have the deal for you. Use code HTS with our friends at SeatGeek. SeatGeek is an online app. We all use it. We've all used it before in the past. Use code HTS at checkout to receive $20 off of your first purchase. That's code HTS at checkout for $20 off of your first purchase. I used these to buy Brewers versus Dodgers tickets last summer. I know Brady's used them to buy football tickets before. We love it. It's super easy. It's super convenient. So we encourage you to use it. Use code HTS at checkout for $20 off of your first purchase. And like we said, that can go to minor league baseball games when that's coming up this season. If you're going to the World Baseball Classic, which is coming up, that would be fun. You can go to that. Um, spring training training games are going to be coming up. You got the NBA. We used it when we went to the Timberwolves Cavaliers game a few months ago. And yeah, you can use it for just about anything. So you can use code HTS, $20 off your first purchase. But Brian, you've talked about sheep and pigs and you brought up cows. Are you guys looking into any specific breed of cow you want to bring onto the farm? Yeah, actually. Uh, so we had Angus before, um, but our original plan when we first ever started the farm was to do Scottish Highlands. And um, so we're going to finally do what we wanted to do in the first place. And honestly, after starting the farm and going through it and everything like that and listening to other people and things, uh, I just really ended up turning out like, you know, slowly getting back to what we originally wanted to do anyway. So um, 
this time around, we're going to do uh, Scottish Highlands, and we're excited about it. It's honestly, you know, I haven't really worked with, you know, I've, well, I haven't worked with much, many cows before besides the Angus, but I definitely haven't worked with any with horns. So uh, mm -hmm. that's definitely going to be a little interesting and um, excited for the challenge. And bam, burger joint added to the chain. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, this is becoming this is a more topic for a pizza place. <laughs> oh. Or what about Bam Bam's bar, 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 bar riding? Bar. What about that? We got a Bam Bam's bull riding. We're yeah, we could do that too. Fucking Bam Bam's bar and grill too. Oh my gosh! Oh. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> well, geez, that's start nice. start stealing ideas from the Food Network yeah, shows. <laughs> <laughs> all homegrown beef. All these down. <laughs> exactly. And if you need some business partners, we can help. We don't have any money for you, but <laughs> we can do like hey. 0.00001% share. We got 20 bucks. <laughs> more hey, you guys can help though. I mean, you guys got some experience. Probably a little more than I do. Yeah, just don't ask any of us to cook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can cook a mean grill. steak. Sorry. All right, okay. The two of you can grill. Yeah, I can grill. We got a pizza in the oven. Exactly. It's waiting. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> it is waiting. <laughs> it smells good. I mean, it's, it, it's twice baked. That's it was. I did it on purpose. <laughs> twice baked ice cream? Are you kidding? <laughs> oh my god. No, we need to wrap this up. You're done. <laughs> Anybody have any more? Yeah, that's this is why you sit behind the one, camera. <laughs> So, what would be the most exotic animal you would ever buy? Exotic animal. Uh, well, my wife really wants emus, and I'm like, hell no. What? I will not do it. Why not? No. Absolutely. Are you kidding me? This thing will peck your eyes out. Like, hell no. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a life-size velociraptor. Yeah. This thing, if he wants to go crazy on you. <laughs> Gotta do your dodging. That's like <laughs> it'll drop kick you. I mean, she's like, Oh, they can jump Why? really high. I'm like, Yeah, it's gonna jump and like claw your eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> there are some peacock farms up here, though. What do you think about peacocks? There you go. Peacocks are pretty cool. Uh, I've been around some peacocks before, like just walking by them and stuff like that. They seem all right, you know, they don't seem like they're gonna try to kill you or anything. <laughs> I've seen some videos of emus. And they look like they're trying to kill you. So, yeah, nothing yeah. but vengeance I mean, I, in their soul. I can just try to, yeah, <laughs> relive a Jurassic Park or something like that, I guess. We, we, uh, we have a friend from school that his family owns a llama. Okay, llamas are cool. Emus, or no, not emus. Uh, what's the other? Not llamas, the alpacas. Uh, there were alpacas. alpacas on the farm I worked at in high school. Yeah. Spit at you. Cool. you Wait, I thought llamas spit. Oh, I, I don't spit too. I promise. Oh, they, they might do? be both. They do. <laughs> they do. I promise. <laughs> we had one that, that figured out that the bottom wire of the electric fence wasn't charged, and I didn't know that. And I walked outside one day, and I noticed it was just chilling in their front yard. And I looked at my boss, and I'm like, "Uh, one of your alpacas got out." And she was like, "Oh, it's fine. He'll go back." And I watched him crawl back underneath the fence, and he was hitting the wire, but he knew it wasn't charged. Oh, jeez. <laughs> He's smart, huh? Yeah, he he figured that out. Two uh, no, others followed. <laughs> no, no there, none of them did it. None of the rest of them did it. Just that one. There's always got to be one. Right. There's always got to be one. That, Have you guys uh, ever had a troublesome yeah. animal like that? That's too smart for its own good. Uh, yes, we've had. Uh, oh, children. <laughs> yeah. Well, really well. Almost good. I'm sure here in the frozen. And can you hear me? Yep, we can yeah, now. Okay, okay. We had a bull who would jump the fence like a deer, <laughs> and he would literally just jump over onto the other side and then just stand there and would eat, would just hang out along the side of the fence. And all the like cows are, he was with the cows, so it's not like he was jumping to females or anything. He would literally just jump over the fence and just hang out on the, the roadside. Of our driveway. Yeah, our sheep will either jump the fence 
and then pretend like they can't jump back the other direction over the fence. No matter what they do, they'll just be like, I'm stuck here. I don't know what you want from me. Or yeah. uh, if they're in our area that doesn't have grass, they'll stick their head through the fence and then they can't get it back. So then you got to go over there and like jam their head back through. Some have worked out better than others. We won't go there, but... He's <laughs> running through fence if he had to get back. Sheepers. What was that, Brian? I said our, our bull, he wouldn't jump back, so he would just run through it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's... That is that is always an option, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Clayton and I, uh, we were neighbors growing up, and the house... On the house on the other side of Clayton had a bunch of horses, and there was just some random day in July. My mom called me and goes, Hey, walk down the road with your with Clayton and go make sure this horse doesn't leave this person's yard. I don't know how the horse got out of the pen. It was it was like the fences were fairly tall, but that thing just had to really jump out. It was just chilling in the driveway, getting ready to walk out onto the road. Sending two teenage boys to guard a horse is crazy. Yeah, they're like 13. <laughs> I there's no way there's no way. I have bad experience with the horses and actually now that you brought up the horse that's probably the worst animal incident we've had on the farm was with a horse and my wife likes horses but I absolutely do not mess around with horses well we got to hear about it now what all went down uh, yeah the so, trauma, okay. Jeez. yeah yeah bring it back PTSD here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all the all the fights and just absolutely haymakers he's had thrown at him, and the horse is what brings the PTSD. The horse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Okay, so we got like my wife was in vet school at the time, and uh, this lady she worked with said that you know we were just kind of getting some animals and stuff like that, and it was like, oh, we, my friend, she has a bunch of horses, and she has she's running out of room. She said, hey, it's one for free. You guys, if you guys want it, she, you can have it. It's a Tennessee walking horse. It's been, you know, trail ridden, all that, blah, 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 fun, good to ride. You know, we'll come with the saddle and everything. So we're like, oh, okay, yeah, that'd be cool experience. I was already iffy about it because an experience I had when I was a kid, you know, we, we were in Mexico one time and rode a horse and like my whole family was on horses, you know, there were. Just gotta give it a sec. Hello. There we go. Okay. We heard that you and your family were in Mexico with horses. That was the last. Yes. That was where you left okay. us off. That was the first horse experience, and mine bolted anyway down the beach. They had to run it down and stop it. <laughs> I was I was done with horses after that. <clears throat> so this was like, this was like the you know let's try again kind of thing. Uh, so we got the horse, whatever, and it was with our cows. And like, then it started picking on the cows and like biting them oh my God. and like being a terror. <laughs> so then we separated it from the cows <clears throat> and my wife had rode it like a couple times. And then one time she went to take it out to ride it and she got out on it. She got on it and um, started to go. And all of a sudden the thing just went crazy, like reared up and then kicked and like launched her off over it and oh, she no. just like nose dived into the the ground and i'm right there and the kids are right there right so she like, like smacks into the ground and the horse goes buck wild runs through the fence i'm like helping her up while this horse is like running through fence runs over to the cows runs the cows through my neighbor's fence Oh, oh no. <laughs> wow. Starts running back to us. I'm like helping her up to move her and yelling at the kids, like, get in the shop. Like, he's coming. Get in the shop. <laughs> run 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 run. Save yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then I get her up or whatever. And then he goes running into like uh, one of a little stall area we had. And he runs into there. And then you just hear like all kinds of commotions going on. And I'm like, Telling you know, the kids to stay in the shop. Don't come out. Don't come out. And uh, then he, like, comes storming out. And, like, we run to the side. And he goes running into, like, 
our lake. There's a lake right there. He goes running into the lake. And then so my wife's like, I'm going to get the neighbor and I'm going to go get our cows and try to get them back in here. You go get the horse. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I cannot Damn trade it. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, I figured, okay, well, you know, yeah, I'll tough it out. You know, she just got bucked off the dang thing. Like, yeah, I'll go fish it out of the lake, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so, like, she gives me the harness and everything. And so I go in there, and I'm in waders, and I'm walking into this this lake, and it's just sitting in there. <clears throat> and, like, every step I take, then it, it like, moves. like, whoosh, whoosh, And it's, like, moving through the water, like, nothing. Like, it's on land. Like, and it's... <laughs> It's like I want to say I was gonna say waist high, but it's not like a horse. Like all the water's like past its legs, like almost to like its shoulders, and it's moving through this water like nothing. And I'm like, this is where I die. This is where I die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna get drowned by a horse. Like this is this is gonna happen right now. So. I'm going in and I'm like making my way towards them. I'm like waist deep now. And I'm like, yeah, okay, this is it. Like I can't move very fast in the water right now. He's going to kill me because he's like terrified. <clears throat> he has his saddle, but it's all sideways now because he's ran through fence and it's hanging on him. And he's like terrified of it. Like, because it's like swinging. Um, so I'm like, okay. So I throw the, the harness or whatever the lead off to the side and i'm like okay i gotta get the saddle off him first took me an hour to get to him like sweet talking him the whole time like don't worry buddy i'm just here to help you i'm just here to help you we're buddy we're buds we're friends like that like the whole way and like barely taking any steps took an hour got to him took the saddle off took me about 30 minutes to get back to the the short put the saddle down go back with the lead about another hour to sweet talking him got the lead on him and was able to walk him out. And that was the last time. No, I was going to say the last time I've ever seen that horse, but he wasn't there long after that. <laughs> we got rid of him oh, after man. that. I was like, there's Wonder no way. <laughs> and then they're like, yeah, we got him for, we got a free horse. You know why? Because it's not trained. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, who does like it? So long story short, Brian does not do second chances anymore. <laughs> we don't do horses. That's 100% facts. Not like, even like a little mini like... horse? No, no. Not, not even a mini <laughs> horse. <laughs> if I'm going to get a horse, it'd be a ride, but I'm not even up to that. I'm going to ride the steel horse, baby. Steel, steel horse. horse. There you go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm. It's something that I can control myself. I can control the throttle, all that. Yeah, we rode horses at Camp Wilson. We did that for our school. What was like that? Like sixth a Friday, grade Saturday trip, Friday, like fifth grade trip, something like that. Yeah, fifth grade trip. And we're telling you what, these horses were old and just did not care <laughs> because you get on them and they just had the path. And I'm I'm over here just being a little stupid. But I'm just like, all right, I want you to turn left when we're supposed to turn right. So I'm pulling left on the reins the whole time. And he's just walking right. No, they knew the, the they knew the path. They were like, you got to be really careful with these exactly. horses. You know, you got to make sure you're leading them right. They knew the path. They were just exactly. like, they were just yeah. following the next guy in line. They're like, like trying to pull what are you doing? He's just kind of like walking to the right. <laughs> right you got to go this way, man. I don't know what you're doing, but. <laughs> yeah, I've heard freak stories about horses. Like horses too. Like I have a buddy. He's terrified of horses as well. There's so many people at my job who who own and have horses and i'm just like it's not worth it it's Pass. not worth it they're so expensive too yeah they are it's crazy hello hey, we're, back. We're, back. All right, there we're, we're back okay <laughs> your friend yeah. is terrified of horses yeah he tried to get over his fear and he went to like a horse farm and to ride at one like trained you know this pro trainer or whatever there was like a group there all gonna get on some horses and the lady's right there talking about this horse with the horse right there talking about how it's her pride horse she's raised it from a little whatever and the thing he said the thing bit her in the trap in her trap bit her trap and then slung her like five feet oh i was God. like and he was like i was like hell no and he left <laughs> I'm, out. I'm like dude i'm right there with you like he raised his horse from when he was little and it just about like killed her. 
Yeah, I'm bailing instantly too. There's there's yeah, no I'm way there. I'm sticking around. Yeah, I'm out. Nope, I'm out there. <laughs> yeah. So I'm done with horses. No horses for me. <laughs> so do I have permission to name this episode of Horseback Riding with Brian Barberina or <laughs> <laughs> my my experience with horses? <laughs> oh goodness. All right, well, I don't think like normal size horses, like, but like the Clydesdales, Clydesdales, that's where the line is drawn right there. Those things are massive. Man, I don't even know if I trust the little ones. Like, my, long, just, Shetland pony. my line is drawn just that horse. Like, I mean, the, the, the <laughs> ponies at the fair, the Shetland ones, the little Shetland ponies, yeah, like the like, the, like five year olds can ride. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so the ones are just need to walk in a circle for hours. Dude, you, you feel so bad. <laughs> They're, they don't name us. They don't like us. They're, they're, All right. <laughs> oh God, calm down. Brian, I will say, when I worked at the farm in high school, I was bitten by a mini horse one time. Oh. Yep. Yeah. See? It, they're they're ruthless, man. Were yeah. Dragged around by one. Huh? Weren't you also dragged around by a horse one time, Clinton? <laughs> no, but I had the chip. So they had the farm that I worked at had this cattle herding dog that wasn't trained yet. And I was walking, I was feeding their animals. They were out of town. I let him out and he's out on a leash. So I'm taking care of other stuff. I come back and I look outside and he's not with his leash. I'm like, well, that's not good. So I'm looking around and he made his way into the mini horse pen and was chasing all the mini ponies around. (laughs) And it's just me there. So I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to have to figure this out. So I crawled underneath the fence and he was like herding them in circles. So like I could kind of predict where he was going to go. And I was trying to tackle this dog in the middle of this horse pen. <laughs> you should took practice me- it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It took me probably half an hour to get him down. And then I dragged him back underneath the fence and inside. <laughs> See, Some of the best stories are on a farm. That's, That's true. That's realize. true. Anything can happen at any given moment. Anything can yeah. happen. <laughs> I still well, remember my older cousin getting clothesline because he was chasing his pig. Like we were training for the fair, and we have these like the pipes that connect each uh, house, all like the, like the water pipes. And he ran through one and just wasn't paying attention. He just clotheslined himself, and you could hear it from the <laughs> house. I mean, boom! We're like, oh no. <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> well, Brian, I think that's pretty much all we had for you. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we sign off? I uh, just I appreciate you guys always having me on, always taking the time to to talk and you know me get out there tell some stories. Now you know, don't ever come at me with a horse. <laughs> <laughs> We're fighting if you try, but <laughs> yeah, def- oh, definitely. So don't maybe like that. maybe we should bring a horse. <laughs> <laughs> and there is well, you you well, you weren't part for the first episode, right? No, with Brian. Yeah, yeah. you were here was for the first episode. Isaac wasn't here. So, okay. So I, wasn't, part of the group. Yeah, I didn't. Here. Well, I didn't know if we added a member since we uh, threw down the gauntlet, but. Oh, oh no, yeah. I was, I was here for the gauntlet. All right. Clay, and we'll add Dylan to our team. How about that? Maybe we'll have a chance then. <laughs> Maybe. We just interviewed a local MMA fighter a couple weeks ago. He's in the LFA right now. Oh, awesome. That's cool. Close yeah, to you guys? Yeah, he trains in our hometown, actually. Oh, wow. Awesome. But that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that wraps it up. Yeah. This concludes Hot one Take Sports thing. episode. Oh, oh, one, one more. One more. One more. Thing. One second. So oh. there's an octagon with some basketball hoops that you can punch people and play basketball. Any opinion on it? I mean, <laughs> is, yeah. it, is it like people are getting paid to do this or are you doing it for fun? We saw a video of it, and we're not sure. There's, like, two yeah. mini hoops on both ends, and it's four-on-four, four, I think. Oh, hell and yeah. Pretty... I'll just go in there and be an enforcer. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> give me the ball. Said, just it. Yeah, out. don't pass it to me. I'll just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine what would happen. <laughs> yeah, I, would, I, just, I just don't think I'll full weight trying to... <laughs> yeah, straight take that right for the arm bar <laughs> yeah. the Robbie Lawler I don't think you can submit any oh. oh. <laughs> alright Brian end of the interview we gotta ask any any new hot takes for us any new hot takes don't buy a horse don't get take a horse for free don't do it 
I like it. Good sound advice. I did it on Tried that. and true hot take. That's what we like to see. <laughs> Tried and true. <laughs> no one goes to the tune of the episode. Life now. advice with yep. Brian. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate you coming on. You know, tell the family we said hi. We appreciate Thank you. you. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Look forward to the next time. Yeah, you you best believe when you get booked, we'll be reaching out. Mm-hmm. Yes. For sure. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon then. Yes, sir. We'll be yep. watching. Yes. Appreciate it, guys. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Take care. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Thank you. See ya. Enjoy the pizza. Oh, I will. will do. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love talking to him. Every time that we have him on, it's always a good time. Bro, he's just one of the guys at this point. He's one of the guys. That's the fun part about these interviews. Yeah, We have these little pieces of paper. I don't know if we're still recording or if this is going to be the episode. We've got these question lists. I mean, we we probably hit most of them, but we did. We had one question about the farm. We spent half the episode on. I didn't realize I was like off the page like the whole time. Dude, we were talking about pizza. Hey, man, we talked about pizza, pizza Pizza and farm animals. I don't know what we're gonna name this one. There's so many options. Horseback riding with Brian. Pizza and horseback riding with Brian. Yeah. Pies and horses. Brian's shutting his own. But there's gotta be there's gotta be something. something, Apple on horses. Title. There you go. Title. <laughs> Title. Hey, all, all you know what? This should be this thing. should be how we end every episode. Just trying to figure out a title for it. Oh That'd be freaking hilarious. Freaking <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> two hour. <laughs> two hour episode. Disclaimer. Um, he said. He said the F word. Shut up. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> He's lying to you. Who cares? Yeah. But um, this has been done. Hot Take Sports episode seventy two. Make sure to follow us on all of our social medias at Hot Take Sports sixteen. Uh, shout out to Brian for coming back on with us. We always love having Brian on. Uh, make sure to look out for a fight announcement for his next fight. Like he said, he's been talking to multiple people, just waiting for the higher ups of the UFC to get it done. Uh, thank you guys for listening, and we will see y'all next week. And keep sending hot takes. Yes, sir. Please do. That's an episode. <laughs>